Hello. Welcome to the introduction of the Seasonal Advantage Portfolio. I am John Velo, founder of EquityClock.com and Associate Portfolio Manager with Casama. I hope this introduction provides you with some insight as to this new strategy provided by Casama. As you might have guessed, the Seasonal Advantage Portfolio derives its mandate based on seasonal investing, a strategy pioneered in Canada by my father Don Velo a couple of decades ago. Seasonal investing is a strategy that you may think you understand due to the simplicity implied by publications focusing on historical price tendencies and the expected repetition of patterns over time. But oftentimes, what fails to be communicated is the average price patterns exhibited for a number of asset classes are driven by underlying fundamental influences that push and pull on prices throughout the year. These recurring tendencies can relate to economic indicators, corporate earnings, consumer and business spending patterns, recurring announcements, and other planned events. One influence that investors may be familiar with is the fluctuation in consumer spending patterns throughout the year. Looking at how retail sales actually perform during the calendar year, the uptick in activity in November and December leading into the end of year holiday season is an obvious and expected event. Retail sales also show strong results into the spring, as consumers make purchases of big ticket items, such as cars and items for the home following the colder winter months. These influences tend to drive the average price action of stocks in the retail industry. Between October and November, as well as January and April, retail stocks tend to rise as investors look ahead and price in the upbeat activity. The seasonal investing process is actually a three-pronged approach, incorporating fundamental, technical, and seasonal analysis. As highlighted with the retail example, fundamental analysis allows for the identification of influences that drive price throughout the year. Charting these fundamental factors in an average seasonal profile allows us to determine if the tendency is occurring this year and to what degree versus seasonal norms. These fundamental factors can play out over long time frames, providing a backdrop that can persist for as many as years at a time. Once this fundamental backdrop is analyzed, areas of the market that have historically benefited from the fundamental trends are isolated, driving holding periods that can range from a number of weeks to a number of months. These are time frames that investments in the various segments in the market have performed in a consistent and measurable manner, often incorporating results that have lower volatility in the broader market. The defined seasonal time frames may not capture all or any of the long-term fundamental influences that are driving price, but they have tended to be the optimal time historically to obtain exposure, offering the best chance of success. Rounding off the seasonal investing approach is technical analysis, which helps us to pinpoint the best entry and exit points surrounding the defined seasonal periods. Technical analysis is based on a number of factors, including trend, momentum, and relative performance, the goal of which is to limit risk and maximize the reward for all investment holdings. Seasonal tendencies can influence virtually any investment as a result of the variability of economic activity throughout the year. From an equity sector perspective, the period between October and June has historically been the best time to hold cyclical assets of the market, whether it be industrials, discretionary, or materials. This is the time frame when economic activity tends to be the most robust, and upside catalysts are more frequent. The other part of the year between June and October tends to favor defensive bets, as equity market volatility rises and economic activity slows amidst the summer vacation season. While this is the broad framework in which the market has historically operated in, individual tendencies influencing each segment of the market can vary significantly. For example, consumer spending patterns and the strength of the trends will have a significant influence on consumer stocks while areas that are more sensitive to the production of goods, such as industrials, 
will derive their strength based on trends of manufacturing activity, shipping, and industrial production. Oftentimes, it is more appropriate to break sectors out into the various industries that operate within them to accurately target the fundamental influences affecting price. Take the industrial sector for example. The sector is composed of stocks in the building materials, machinery, transportation, defense, waste, and business support service industries, each of which will react to their own specific tendencies. The influence of commodity prices, construction activity, business buying patterns, and even weather, to name a few, can all produce differing reactions amongst the sector constituents. Sometimes the sector, sector makeup is so broad that it fails to reflect the drivers of price. Up until recently, Standard & Poor's had grouped the real estate, banks, and insurance all within the financial sector. The impact of rates is an important influence on the financial sector overall, but two of the three industries tend to react one way, and the other, real estate, reacted opposite to the cost of borrowing. The former tends to see benefits in a rising rate environment, while the latter is negatively impacted. Real estate has since been separated into its own sector group, but the average impact on price patterns for the financial sector could persist for a while. No matter which way you look at the sector, while it is easy to conclude one overall driver impacting price, the seasonal influences for each industry are just as unique as the companies themselves. This can create opportunities in equity positions throughout the year, rather than just playing the cyclical risk-on time frame for stocks between October and June. Given the dominance of cyclical industries within the broader market, the average performance profile of major equity benchmarks is probably something that you're familiar with. The period between October and May has been the best time of year to be in the broader equity market while the other half of the year underperforms by comparison. Breaking the year into two, the back half of the year tends to be driven more by consumer and business spending patterns, while the front half of the year tends to generally be driven by manufacturing activity, as products are produced following the colder winter months. The middle of the year tends to see influences for each stagnant, often warranting a rotation towards the the, mar the areas of the market that can generate a return above the price performance of the broader market. These are often higher yielding areas of the market, whether it be in staples, utilities, or REIT sectors. The strength of the tendencies influencing prices can vary over time, depending on where we are in the economic cycle. In expansionary periods, strength in equity prices during the middle of the year can be quite common, and conversely, recessionary conditions can have an obvious negative impact between October and May. Having an appropriate understanding of where the economy is fundamentally is core to the methodology employed by the seasonal advantage portfolio. Allocations can be adjusted to appropriately reflect the fundamental position of the economy, rather than merely reflecting where we are in the calendar year. Given the average context of risk on and risk off periods for stocks, a seasonal decision flow chart can be derived. The mandate aims, main, aims to maintain a core position within the broad equity market between October and June, while fixed income investments are favored as the core holding between June and October. From these core positions, seasonal opportunities are sought, primarily by way of ETFs tracking the various segments of the market. The goal of pursuing seasonal opportunities is to outperform the core position by investing in areas that have historically achieved results above the market return. Seasonal opportunities can become apparent within the various sectors or industries of the market. When a sector or industry within its, seasonal, within its period of seasonal strength is showing signs of outperformance per compared to the core position, an allocation is enacted. While sectors are adequately covered by ETFs in the marketplace, there are times when industry exposure cannot be obtained via a marketable ETF. In such an event, a basket of individual securities will be selected 
to represent the industry exposure. The desire is to maintain diversified exposure to sectors and industries at all time while mitigating single stock risk. In the event that relative performance of sectors or industries deteriorate relative to the core position, positions are rotated back to the overarching benchmark. For years, seasonal investing has been thought of as a mere probability-based play based on how investments have performed historically. But overlooking the seasonal fundamental tendencies can cause investors to miss those recurring drivers of price. Let me reiterate the importance of this analysis of the seasonal fundamentals within an, within an example using oil. The energy commodity has historically shown seasonal strength between mid-February and early May, leading into the high demand summer driving season. But over the past couple of years, there have been huge fluctuations in the supply of the energy commodity. Coming into the 2017 period of seasonal strength, the days of supply of oil was at a record high, and the increase to inventories was well above average. The trends in supply that were abnormal for that time of year resulted in a decline in the price of oil between the middle of February and the beginning of May. Turn to 2018. When the OPEC supply cuts have been brought, have, were brought on and brought the market back into balance, a below average change in stockpiles acted as a bullish catalyst for prices during the same period of strength, resulting in a gain of 22% in the approximately three month span. Not respecting the fundamental drivers of price can mean the difference between a winning and a losing trade. While the term advantage is in the name of this portfolio, the real advantages are many. The first is diversification. In a world dominated by strategies focused exclusively on fundamental and technical analysis, the seasonal angle presents an alternate return stream that could diversify your exposure away from these mandates that are often highly correlated to the performance of the broad market. The diversification arguments flows over to the next advantage, which is the three-pronged approach. Using three types of analysis allows the mandate to remain disciplined, holding investments that check off the box of each type of review. On the same token, the mandate is less prone to speculation, a hallmark of fundamental strategies that can often wait for years for a thesis to play out. Perhaps one of the more important advantages that this strategy is, is that it's easy to understand. The stories are simple, and the fluctuation of economic activity based on seasons is something that is well understood. Think of the surge in consumer spending leading into the holiday season, thereby driving stock prices higher, or the peak in the price of energy commodities around the start of the summer driving season. Understanding your investments is often the key to investment performance success. The last two advantages are two that I have touched on already in this presentation which is reduced reliance on historical price patterns given the use of fundamental analysis and the potential for lower volatility versus the market given the alternate return set presented. If you're interested in gaining exposure to the seasonal advantage portfolio or any of the portfolios that Casamore offers, please reach out to me such that we can discuss if these mandates are appropriate for you and your your particular circumstances and risk tolerances. I can be reached by filling out the contact form at either equityclock.com or castlemore.com or by sending an email to contact at equityclock.com. Thanks for taking the time to listen to this introduction. I look forward to working with you to fulfill your portfolio needs. For full disclosure, Comments and opinions offered in this presentation are for information only. They should not be considered as advice to purchase or to sell mentioned securities. Data offered in this introduction is believed to be accurate, but is not guaranteed.